here watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and I have a very special guest here. Uh, you know, some would say that we are in the middle of the great resignation with all the changes in the pandemic that's going on in our country. People are quitting, people are changing careers, people are fed up with the workplace, all sorts of things are happening out there. And we called Suzanne Cretal to come in and talk to us about this. Uh, and I have so many questions for you. I can't wait to talk about this. Before Bring we it. started the show, <laughs> I was talking about this, the great resignation mm -hmm. with you. And you said you kind of don't necessarily agree with that. So I want to hear that. But first, tell us about you and your background and everything that you do. Well, great. Thanks. First of all, thanks so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so basically, I am uh, run an executive search firm. And surprisingly enough, I didn't do that right out of college. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was not the thing that um, sparked my attention. What sparked my attention was I had grown up in retail, worked at a little drugstore in my small town, and uh, um, found a job with Time Inc., which is publishing, and okay. worked on the retail side of it. So I was one of the people that helped got all the magazines to retail. So I was inundated in what it meant to get products to the store and okay. how to merchandise them and how to get consumers interested in them. So that was really my bread and butter. And I got laid off because publishing world changed a little bit. I was going to say, yeah, that's probably not a big all. career anymore. <laughs> not a big yeah. career anymore. Yeah. But what a great foundation. Yeah. And what a great start with training and everything I was exposed to. So I transitioned into recruiting okay. after one more stint of going to consulting. And when I was in consulting, I started learning about what was up and coming, what was really big, and that was e-commerce. Okay. So back then, it was less than 1% of sales. Today, it's like 17 to 20%. E-commerces. E-commerces. Okay, wow. And the consulting, so you would consult for what kind of firms would you consult for? Oh, anybody that did e-commerce and retail. Okay. So some of my clients were Apple. I did okay. some work with Apple because obviously they have retail establishments yep. as well as working in store. Um, but I also uh, went after any consumer goods company, consumer electronics, anybody that sold to the consumer essentially. Okay, great. And then you got into recruiting. I got into recruiting, yeah. And I knew that I wanted to make e-commerce my niche because everything that everyone would have talked about in my consulting was all about e-commerce. How do we get our products in front of the consumer? How do yep. we solve for problems with supply chain, for shipping costs, for just getting their attention? You know? Right. I mean, because there's two sides of it. Like mm -hmm. you said, all the back the logistics of yeah. getting it there and, mm -hmm. and what factories are you using or what, what shipping places are you using. But then also, how are you marketing? Are you looking at social media marketing, Google ads and that kind of thing? Is that you in that world as well? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Performance marketing is really big. Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes they work with really small companies that require one person to do a lot of that. Uh -huh. Other times I work with large corporations that want a very specific person just to do that one thing. And that example would be performance marketing. And so when you would start recruiting, I mean, do you... How do you even start that? Because LinkedIn, let's say, mm -hmm. is a place now, and people that, you know, if we need to hire somebody here, well, that's the first place we'll go. Well, there's a couple different places. Um, and then, so as a recruiter, recruit, recruiter do you, um, where do you go and look for people? Well, for, of course, LinkedIn, it's a great resource, uh -huh. um, but it's only as good as the content that's on there, right? Uh -huh. If I go to a page and uh, um, they have, I don't know, let's say e-commerce manager, and that's the only thing, it's just their title, uh -huh. it doesn't tell me a lot. Do they focus on Amazon? Do they focus on Walmart? Do they do direct to consumer? Like, I have no idea, right? Yeah. So the best way to, for me to find them is obviously if they have a lot of content on their, their profile, but if not, I have to just reach out to them and and hope for the best that they might be the right fit. So, but otherwise, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I have my own database that I've okay. kept up for years. Mm -hmm. So, ideally, I have them already in my um, in my database. And well, because now you've started your own company. Correct. So that, let's talk about that. That's segue yeah. from recruiting, and mm -hmm. then you were like, "Hey, I want to start my own company." Well, I realized that there was a few patterns that emerged when I switched over to recruiting. Number one, people don't interview every day. And I got a lot of people reaching out to me that I didn't have jobs for, per se. Okay. And they needed some instruction on uh, how to interview, what they should be looking for, and mm -hmm. couldn't answer basic questions, which is fine. We all get in that habit because we don't interview every day. It's completely it, understandable. It is, and there's such weird questions sometimes. You know, you don't really, you're not, you don't get used to answering. So yeah, yeah you got to get back into the practice. Well, and we're used to talking about we, because maybe we're part of a team. Uh -huh. But in an interview, it's all about 
me, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to hear what all the team did. I want right. to know what you're going to do right. for me. Right. And that's where I realized that I could really make a big impact if I spent more time with individuals and did coaching as well. Because I may not have a, be able to place them right. per se, because I'm limited to what my clients are looking for at that time. But I can tell when somebody needs a little help to yes. craft their message. Yes. And to answer the hard questions, because there, there are a lot of the questions out there. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do you do if you have a, a hard situation at work? How do you handle it, right? That's some of the questions people get in, in interviews. So then you would help them kind of craft that. They'd give you a sample example, sample answer, mm -hmm. I should say. And you'd say, oh, let's tweak that. <laughs> well, let's let's explore that a little bit more. Yeah. It's typically what I do. I did that today. This person mentioned something about um, being fascinated by, fascinated by direct consumer. And I was like, okay, well, tell me more about that. Why are you fascinated about that? Uh -huh. Because what happens in an interview is a, a hiring manager will ask a question and then the candidate delivers the message they think is the right answer and then they stop. Mm. And then the other person isn't receiving the message that you think that you're trying to, pre you know, present. Yeah. And then it just goes down a, a rabbit hole, and it, the hiring oh. manager's turned off, and then you move on, and you're not moving on, essentially. <laughs> right. Oh gosh, just talking yeah. about it, I'm getting <laughs> uncomfortable just thinking about interviews that I've had, and, and you know, something will come out of my mouth, and I think that was not the right. You can kind of tell by their face, right? Oh, it's not going well. Okay, but tell me how you got because seasoned executive. Mm -hmm. Is search, your, search, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you kind of focus on executives? That you, that, you know, how did you know that that's what you wanted to focus on? Well, so much of it is about who was coming to me for, and what they needed for help. Yep. So, and, and I knew what I had in my um, database, and yep. and you know, doing this for over eight years now. Um, you know, I may have started with a younger group of people at uh -huh. that time, but yeah. they are now all, all evolved and uh, um, been promoted, and so my. I go with the talent, right? And yeah. then I go with what the, the hiring managers require of me. So, you know, right now, like I have like four or five very senior roles. I also have a, cube, a couple of junior roles, mm -hmm. um, which I don't work on as much. My, uh, one of my employees does that. But I do kind of run all of it. Well, it seems like as you get a little more experienced mm -hmm. and you get into the executive levels, it sure. may be a little bit harder because... You know, a lot of people are looking for, oh, I need an, in not maybe not an intern, but you know, someone entry level. It's easier mm -hmm. thing to put out there, but finding somebody with the qualifications that that you need, it's it probably is more nuanced and, and does require some another third party to come in and help. Well, it's actually funny, the, the, the lower level positions can oftentimes be more difficult to fill, oh, okay. which is unique. You wouldn't uh -huh. have thought that, right? right. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. you know, it's a little shocking. But what happens is, is that people that are new into the workforce, they don't have a lot of exposure to a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? They don't have the experience. Number two, they're unsure when is the right time to leave. You know, maybe I need to stay here a little bit longer. Or you have the opposite problem of you have job hoppers that are going to a different company every six months. And that's mm -hmm. certainly not what my clients are looking for for me. Right. They don't want that. They right. want stability because everything is an investment. Mm -hmm. But the more senior level roles, that also gets a little tricky because um, there are fewer senior roles. Once you move up the ladder, That's there true. are a few fewer opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's true. And again, they require, my clients require very specific sets of um, experience and, yes. um, you know, what direction are they going in the company? Is that person going to fit in with the culture? Are they the ones that are going to take us on to bigger and greater, better, excuse me, bigger and greater things? Yeah. So it can be uh, very challenging because it's not just about their experience level. It's also about their demeanor, how they interact with people. It's cultural fit. Yeah, it's also, that's that's a huge part of it because someone huge. on paper, it's mm -hmm. almost like dating too, yeah. right? On paper, someone could be like, oh my God, you're all these things. And you have all these skill sets, but then do you fit into the vibe? Like you said, the culture, mm -hmm. what's your personality like? How do you handle adversity in the workplace? Or, you know, uh, that, that is a challenging part. So do you ever have people that come to you that want you to help them find a job and you think that's that this would be challenging? Do you ever turn people down? Well, I'm always honest. I'm very transparent. Um, so, and I do warn people of that before I start talking yeah. to them because, you know, sometimes it can be a little, some things I have to say are not easy to hear. Let's yeah. put it that way. Okay. So, um, but I did have a situation where somebody hired me as a coach and I was helping them navigate their resume and prepare everything. And 
Um, he wanted me to introduce him to a lot of people, which I don't do normally. Mm -hmm. I will offer to do that only if I feel like really trust the person and because it's my reputation. Yeah. Outside of actual recruiting for an organization. Right. But this person was um, very uh, quick to get angry a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like he mm -hmm. didn't come off very well just mm -hmm. talking to me and his interaction with me. And so there was no way yeah. I was going to introduce him to anyone and I had to tell him that, which is not fun for me. I don't sure. enjoy that. But, but you gotta um, go with your gut there. Gotta go with my gut on that and yeah. um, honesty is the best policy. Right. So Okay, well we've got I've got more questions for you. We've got to take a break, so stick around. And everyone at home, stick around. We've got more with Suzanne Cretal right after this. And you can find us on America Trends TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. In the meantime, and we'll be right back. everyone joining us to experience stories of resilience, hope, perseverance, and joy. Move over to a sport chair, a basketball wheelchair. Category of best video are. We love you guys. Watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. I'm joined with Suzanne Cretal of Seasoned Executive Search. We're talking about recruiting, and you know, I mentioned, or I've been reading, that it's called the Great Resignation right now. You know, this this time period of people changing jobs, or being fired, or quitting, or moving on. And um, so, what do you think about that? What's going on, as far as you can tell, in the landscape of people changing jobs or changing careers right now? Well, I think the Great Resignation was well in in effect before COVID ever hit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there were a lot of people that were a little um, unhappy in their employment. Um, I think we saw a lot of things during COVID that came out. Uh, for example, women in the workforce got hit uh, pretty hard during yeah. COVID. Um, somebody had to stay home with the kids. There was no childcare. Right. It was just such a crazy environment, right? So exactly. who got to, you know, affected the most was women because yeah. they were typically the ones that stayed home with the kids. So, um, but aside from that, um, I actually did a poll on LinkedIn because I was curious about this, about how many people were interested in uh, actually pursuing a career right now during COVID, this was last year, mm -hmm. or um, if they were waiting till after and what was the reason. So most people responded with the fact that uh, having COVID hit them directly and, and you know impacting their lives so much, not only at work, but family life and everything yeah. else, uh, really made them rethink uh, what was important to them. So That was the big thing that I was gleaning from that was that people were, you know, it was literal life and death for people. Yeah. And so then they were thinking, why am I in a dead end job? Why am I not doing my passion? Why, why am yeah. I not? I don't want anything? to put up with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I do think that as generations, some of the younger generations are, are feeling and you know, they're feeling their worth more. They're seeing how they're, they're willing to stand up for themselves. I think more than maybe some of the older generations where, uh, you know, it was maybe just like when you were young, you just made coffee and you got treated like, crap and you just dealt with it right and now that's not necessarily the thing anymore and it's more a team effort and if people aren't feeling that way or feeling fulfilled mm -hmm. why not go do something else or quit and ask for more money too I mean are you seeing that are you seeing some of the younger generations wanting a little bit more when they get 
into the workforce? I think they always want a little bit more. I mean, the younger generation just it lacks that experience, I think. Uh -huh. And I, I probably was very similar in that regard. Yeah. Um, I think there's a learning curve that has to happen with that. But I think that the expectation of older generations to pay your dues and you know, do X, Y, and Z before you're able to get promoted or get into the most, more senior roles, they just don't really work anymore. Um, you know, the younger generation especially, think about how much change has happened in their life just from birth to yes. graduating from college. I mean, they have they have an iPhone in their hand before, you know, right. they're a year old, yeah. so to speak. You know, they know that iPad. So their world is constantly evolving and changing where older generations definitely was a lot slower, yes. much slower pace. So I think we have two worlds that are, need to converge a little bit more in the middle. We still need a little more patience on the younger side, but we need to realize that change is okay and that um, we need to be more accepting of it. And are you seeing people, you know, maybe leaving a job or getting fired, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, and then thinking, I'm just gonna start my own business. Are you seeing that more so now, do you think? Especially because of COVID. Yeah. I think some people got pushed out um, and, and had to reevaluate, but there was nowhere to go. You know, nobody was hiring. It was yeah. completely frozen. Right. And I mean, my year last year was completely dead. So I just focused on coaching. I did a lot of coaching and a lot of webinars and, and things like that. But that's you know, that's genius. what I- That's That's a great way to make money when you have to be at home. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was my focus, but I think where um, where people really came into their own was figuring out. All right, I got to do something. I got to I got to do something else. So yeah. they created it. They created A lot it. was born from you know the problems of of COVID. And when you're coaching people, mm -hmm. do you do well? Probably now a lot of Zoom calls, mm -hmm. coaching sessions. Sure. Um, but are you coaching people, you know, that are maybe in the middle and they're having an existential crisis of who am I, what do I want to do, that kind of coaching? Um, it really depends. I leave it up to them. I usually take an intake call and just kind of start with, tell me about yourself, take me through your career. I want to hear how they tell me that story. Mm -hmm. And then um, before that, though, I do ask for a few job descriptions that they're interested in, not necessarily that they've applied to already, but just what what piques their interest. I want to hear how that story relates to that particular job. Mm -hmm. Because what often happens is, is people go through and give their elevator pitch, and it sounds more like a job description than an actual um, results-oriented pitch that makes sense for the job they're applying for. Mm -hmm. Results oriented, that is a key thing, I think. As someone looking for, for potential new hires, yeah. that's something I wanna see, what have you actually done? But when I'm the one writing it for about myself, I have a hard time get, grasping those things. So I think that's a, that's a good tip probably for people to when they're in a current job, is to write down what results have you seen, right? With numbers and percentages. Isn't that what people are kind of looking for? Well, that's the first thing our eye goes to, uh -huh. right? If we're talking about a resume and we're, we're very visual people, the first thing I do is look for numbers. Yeah. And if they don't have numbers on their resume, I ask them to put that on. Mm, that's you know? a great tip. Yeah. yeah. Because you get five to 10 seconds of someone reviewing your resume. That's it. What do you think about, I don't know if LinkedIn has this, We I talked to some other women that have a website mm -hmm. uh, for looking for new hires. Quick hire is what it's called, but um, video, because I know on that website they have people do a little video pitch. That, so you're actually seeing the person speak and engage and that goes back to our whole idea, do they fit with our culture? You can tell that a little bit better via video than you can the written word, would you think? Um, I think that some people have a difficult time on video. It's just mm. kind of a difficult thing to do for, for the average Joe. We're not mm. used to that at all. Mm. So if you can look at a video and see past some of the mistakes that somebody <laughs> might be making, I think that might be really good. But what I find with hiring managers is they are very critical and um, they don't have a lot of time. They have a day job right. they're doing. Um, really send me the best of the best, that's all I want. So that's why it's advantageous to work with somebody like me before you go down the path of interviewing because once you've entered that realm yeah. and uh, um, you haven't wowed the person on the other end, it's going to be uh, impossible to fix that. So if you do a video, it's gotta be good. It's gotta be good. <laughs> it's gotta be good. And make it creative. Yeah. I mean, you know. I guess it depends on what the job description is that you're going sure. If you're a numbers guy behind a computer, you don't need a video. 
Well, I don't think most people are going to want to see a video first before they look at your resume yeah. because that, again, takes time. That's true. <laughs> you got to watch it. Yeah. So what is the quickest way is, number one, have your LinkedIn profile updated and look good, okay. results oriented. Uh -huh. Number two, have a resume. Update that every six months. Oh, yeah. Okay. Keep it updated That's and practice tip. your elevator pitch. That's super important. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Thanks Hope for having we'll come me. back to the show. Definitely. And everybody at home, stick around for more American Trends. We've got more right after this.